Hey Nerdy Knitter, do you love knitting shawls but you'd like to learn more about how they're constructed? Perhaps you're feeling a bit adventurous and you'd love to knit one for yourself without a pattern? We're going to look at the different ways you can create half circle and crescent shawls and be sure to stick around because I have some book recommendations for you as well. Before we jump in I just want to say hey I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer. My goal is to help you become a confident adventurous knitter. Now let's start with the most basic, a crescent shawl. This shawl is easy to customize and personalize because the increases are always worked at the edges. You start by casting on just a few stitches. Usually you're using a garter tab or an I-cord tab cast on to fill in the space right at the top neck edge because if you don't use that, you end up with sort of a little gap right there. So a tab is often used. And then you can start working the shawl shape and you're working your increases at the edges. Now there's a few ways you can work those increases. You can just work a single increase at each edge on every single row. So you would knit your edge stitches, yarn over, knit the body of the shawl, yarn over, knit your edge stitches. And you would repeat that on every row. Or you could work double increases on the right side rows. A common one here would be a knit yarn over knit where you knit into a stitch but you don't drop it from the needle. You yarn over and then you knit into the stitch again. That takes one stitch and turns it into three. So you're working a double increase. And you would do that on the right side rows. And that is still the same number of stitches as you would get as if you were working those increases on every single row. So if you work a shawl in this way with those four increases worked for every two rows, then you get the basic crescent shawl shape. Like this shawl right here, the Odyssey Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. This uses that basic four increases are worked for every two rows. But if you like crescent shawl shapes, but you want something with a longer wingspan, which a lot of knitters do, then you're going to work more increases at those points. You still cast on the same way and do everything else the same way, but now the rate of increase will change. You're gonna work double increases on the right side rows, that knit yarn over knit is one example, and then you're going to work single increases on the wrong side rows as well. So for every two rows, instead of working four increases, you are working six increases. And that gives you more stitches for the wingspan of the shawl. And that's where you start to get that curly edge that sort of curves up or curls around, like this shawl right here, the Spindrift Shawl by Helen Stewart. You can see that curling edge. That's created by working those extra increases along the wingspan of the shawl. Now the third way to work a half circle shawl is what I call a swirl shawl. Now with a swirl shawl, you're working increases on every other row, usually four, but you could make more swirls if you want to. And after casting on, working your little setup, you're going to work one more stitch before increasing each time. So every time you come to the right side row, you will say your, your first time it will be knit two yarn over, knit two yarn over. The next right side row will be knit three yarn over, knit three yarn over. The next right side row after that will be a knit four yarn over, knit four yarn over and continue that. So every time you're increasing by one stitch, you're working one more stitch before working the increase. Like this example right here, the Stracciatella shawl by Madeline Windsor. You can see the swirls that are created by working the increases in the shape of this shawl. Then we have wedge shaped shawls, usually three wedges, but you can have more than that if you want. This is really similar to a top down triangle shawl if you've ever knit one of those. You have those stitches at the edge and then you're increasing there. Then you have an increase that's worked in the center, usually referred to as the spine where you're working a couple of increases. A wedge shawl is very similar to that, but that spine stitch, you're working a few of those and they're separated to create three wedges. If you've ever looked at a top-down triangle shawl, it, it ends up really being two triangles forming the shape. With a wedge-shaped shawl, you end up with three or even more of those wedges in there creating the shape of the shawl. Now, I really like this one because I'm not a fan of that pointy tip on a triangle shawl, and I can get the same type of construction, but instead I'm creating a half circle, which I prefer to wear. A good example of this is the Winter Wonderland Shawl by Kristen Kapur. You can see that wedge shape in there and then all of the different stitch patterns as well. 
Then we have the half pie shawl, which is something that Elizabeth Zimmerman coined. Now she was famous for using math and percentage systems in her knitting, and she really showed knitters that they didn't have to use a pattern, that they could use their own gauge swatch and a percentage system to design and knit their own sweaters. And she applied this mathematical reasoning to shawl knitting as well with the pie formula. She realized that as the diameter of the shawl doubled, the diameter being the rows, that the, the circumference, which is the stitch count, also had to double. So basically what that means is you start by working a few rows, then you double your stitch count, and then you work twice the amount of rows. So if you've worked three rows, now you will work six, and then you will double your stitch count again, and then you will work twice the number of rows. So if you worked six rows, you're going to work 12, and then you double your stitch count again. And then you would work 24 rows and double your stitch count again. And you continue doing that for the shawl. And she applied this to full circle shawls, a full pie shawl, but you can also use the same formula for a half pie shawl as well. Now a bonus tip, this method is also used for yoke sweaters. When you're knitting a top down yoke sweater, you work a few rows, you work a lot of increases, work some more rows, work some increases again, and it's the same basic formula. Now for a shawl example, look at the Avian Melody by Kristen Kapur. This is a half pie shawl. You can see those increases worked in there. And the really nice thing about this kind of shawl is those increases, because they're worked at set points, your stitch count in between those increase rows remains the same. So if you have a particular stitch pattern you like to use, then you can plug it right into one of the sections where it fits. Now, if you're looking for a few book recommendations, then check out Marie Green's Knit Shawls and Wraps in One Week, especially the Berry Patch and the Forest Grove patterns, which are both crescent shawls. If you prefer something a little more mix and match, Shawls for All by Joyce Fassbender for Knit Picks. This one uses the basic shawl shapes and then has a, a lot of different stitch patterns and edgings so you can combine them to create your own custom shawl. And then there's custom shawls for the curious and creative knitter. This one goes over a lot of different basic constructions and then it has some pattern ideas and lots and lots of things in here. So if you want to explore shawl knitting, then take a look at those books. If you have some recommendations for books or resources for customized shawls, please leave a comment down below and tell me about it. And if you're looking for more recommendations, go down and check out those comments and see what everybody's talking about. And if you're looking for more tips and advice about knitting shawls, check out this playlist right here.